products. Yeah. Okay, what do we got this week? Okay, we got a lot of new products this week. It's nonstop. Okay, first up, we've got the Witty Pie 3 Mini. Uh, this is from UU Gear, and they make awesome Raspberry Pi accessories, especially for the Raspberry Pi Zero. So I like this. This has got a uh, DS uh, 32, 2332, I don't remember the exact port number, but it, it's the high quality um, real time clock. Uh, temperature compensated, it's got a button, it's got a little microcontroller, it's got a lot of software, and basically you can use it as kind of an all-in-one power, real-time clock, auto shutdown, kind of like controller system for the Raspberry Pi. It adds all the stuff that like you kind of wish the Pi had and doesn't, like a real-time clock built in, uh, the ability to like, you know, auto sleep and wake up, um, the, you can see there's a little um, micro uh, capacitor, it's, a, it's not a micro, it's a large capacitor, but instead of a coin cell, it's got a, a capacitor that auto charges um, when it's powered up. Um, and basically it can be used for like automating control of your Raspberry Pi um, without needing any like external soldering or anything, just plugs right in and then you just have to power it through the USB port that way so it can shut off power um, when the timer goes off. Okay, next up. Next up, we've got this shorty cable. Uh, I thought this was just a really fun cable. It's, it's pretty simple. It's USB-A on one end, and then a right angle USB-C on the other. It's really easy. You just plug it into your computer. And I just wanted a short cable that was right angle. Um, and I like this because a lot of our boards have USB-C on the side. And what I like about USB-C is it's reversible. So you, know, you don't need to have like both ways cable. Like You always have it the wrong direction. With this, you just flip it over. So no matter how the USB-C port you want to be right angle, It'll work. It's about six inches long, uh, very compact, uh, works great. Next up. Next up, uh, we have plug-in USB capture, USB to HDMI audio and video capture cards. Um, they're really popular, people love them. But some folks like you don't have a USB-A port, you have a USB-C port. See how this yeah. is going. This is a version of that same uh, low cost, easy to use, you know, it's, it's not, thousand dollars but you also don't have to pay a thousand dollars like yeah. 20 bucks or so you get really good quality um, 8, 1080p HDMI capture into your computer so it's great for if you have like uh, video consoles you want to stream or your Raspberry Pi output or like TV another output, computer, another computer. Yeah, there's, just get one and put it in your bag put it's it, put very it with your handy computer stuff. it's very handy and it just shows up as a camera so it's very easy to use like any software will work with any operating system right, next up Next up, we've got um, this handy case and stand for the um, Adafruit Funhouse. Uh, we're putting more Funhouses in stock. It was just released in the Ada box, and this case came with it. Um, it also comes with some yellow bricks for easy um, uh, assembly. You can make a handy little stand. So I'll show it on the overhead because maybe a little unclear. What's going on here? Use this. Stand. So this comes as individual little yellow bricks that you might be familiar with, um, and then you can arrange them. I, you know, this is one arrangement, but you know, feel free to to make it more or less tilted. And then this uh, sits. Let's see. Let's say I want I want it to actually lean back a little bit more, so I will remove a brick. You can adjust the height and um, angle pretty easily, and then it sits quite nicely. And then it even kind of like locks in a little bit. Um, if you uh, remove this, yeah, like that. So you can have it, the little, um, the bottom nubs here actually end up being like right in the middle of little uh, brick nubs, and so it kind of like locks in place. Um, and then you can just plug into USB and you have a little desk stand. Yeah, you can show from the side. Or maybe side. pick it up and show from the yeah. side. I know, but I want to like yeah. that. Yeah. So um, another thing is it comes with a protective back plate that also has these um, wall mount, um, I don't know, lozenges. Uh, so if you want to attach the fun house to um, a desk or a wall or a box or whatever, if it has two screws in it, you can have the screw um, heads go through here and then it sockets down. So this is you know, pretty common when you're hanging lamps or accessories in your home, you're probably used to using these um, sockets. And then uh, there's also a hole here, sorry, a hole here, so you can hit the reset button if you want by using a pen. And there's four holes because it's completely symmetric no matter how you attach it. And uh, this comes with hardware as well. Next it's a up. great little accessory for your fun house. Uh, next up, we have the Dual Edge NeoPixels. Uh, this is actually, I think Geek Mom showed us this in a project. I was like, that's pretty cool. I want to stock that stuff. 
So it's in the NeoPixel strip that you know and love, it's, it's a little confusing because it's technically it's 120 LEDs per meter, um, but you're probably like the density is 60 LEDs per meter. That's because there's two LEDs on each side, right? So it's like not as dense, but there's more LEDs. Um, so the LEDs are side angle and they go both edges out, right? So it's like if you're looking straight down, you can kind of see light, but it's coming from the side. Maybe we'll go to the overhead and I can, yeah. can show it. So from the top, it's like you see a little bit, but that's because the light is mostly coming out of the side of the socket, of the, uh, sorry, of the, of the NeoPixels, and it's pointing out. So this would be good for like edge lighting or like uh, floor lighting. And um, it's, if there's situations where you're like, oh, I want something to be edge lit on both sides, this is just more compact than maybe getting like two strips. And it's gonna be less expensive as well because you just like connect this up. And these two new pixels, they're in parallel. So it's like, you can't have both sides have different color. Like it acts as if it's one LED strip of one side and it's just like cloned on the other side. So um, I think for uh, Geek Mom's Infinity Mirror Collar, she used this and it looked great. So yeah, like Infinity Mirror projects, edge lighting projects is a great LED strip. All right, next up. Uh, next up, oh, these are cool. These are uh, re-legendable keycaps. I found out that's what these are called, if you're wondering what the name of these things are. So re-legendable keycaps come with two pieces, um, and they're Cherry MX compatible, uh, so you can see the stem yeah, there. Yeah. So you can use them with Gateron, Kale, Cherry MX, anything that has a little cross stem, which is like 90% of um, mechanical keycaps. Key um, they're kind of DSA height and shape. They're not exactly DSA height and shape, but they're like really close. And they come in two pieces. Um, there's a kind of like opaque grayish piece, and there's a clear top. And um, after you pop the top off, you can put something underneath. Like we just put some like stars in there, but um, you can put slips of paper, uh, you can put stickers, what have you, and uh, make your own custom keycaps. Because a lot of times, when you get a, um, a custom cap, you know, or like you have, you're making a mechanical keyboard, the cap has nothing on it, which is like confusing. So how are you going to indicate what it, it does? So you can see, you can see a little bit of light shine through, like even if this was uh, blocked off, um, the top does shine through. And um, they're pretty solid. Like, you know, they, they come apart with a bit of force, but you have to really wedge them. And then you can put whatever you like here and then snap this back on. And they're, they're symmetric. So in four directions, you know, they don't, they don't have an angle. They're not like R4 or R1 or whatever. They don't, um, they're kind of flat and uh, they're easy to use. So if you want to make a macro pad and you don't want to guess at what the keys are, uh, these are super handy. Next up. Speaking of mechanical keys, um, let's say you've heard of these fancy Cherry MX keys and you're like, I, I don't know what's the difference between a blue and a gray and a black and a brown and a red. I, I, I don't know. You know, you hear clicky, you hear tactile, you hear linear. What does that really mean? Well, this little uh, tester, that's right. You can, you, can, you can click each one, one in a row, and uh, test them out. So let's go to the overhead and I'll show each one, see if I can remember what each color is. So the, the most common one is cherry red, and that's this one, it's a linear. So it's not very loud. And then uh, this is, you can check the stem color. This is brown. Browns have a little bit of a tactile bump. You can kind of feel it. It's not loud, but you can feel that there's a little resistance. Um, cherry blacks are a little, they're linear, but they're a little stiffer than the reds. So they're a little bit, take a little bit more force. And then everyone's favorite is the blues, which are very clicky, very clicky. So this is um, a great, you know, you get one of each switch. Uh, they're meant for you to just try them out and see which one you like the most before you buy like 108 of them. Next up. All right, next up, we've got the BME 688. So this is, uh, it sounds so similar to the BME 680. You're probably like, what's the difference? And it's like barely, there's barely a difference. The BME 688 is the next generation after the BME 680. We actually did an INMPI for this sensor a couple weeks ago. So check out our INMPI video. I just linked in the product description if you want like the lowdown of this, this sensor. Basically, it's a temperature, humidity, barometric pressure, and MOX, metal oxide, gas sensor. And the 
temperature heat, the, like just like the 680, but the difference with the 688 is they've added the ability to reprogram how long the MOX heater is on it and the temperature. And that does affect how it reacts to different gases. So you can use that with a machine learning algorithm that they, they have an application that you can load data into that you can train to detect different senses. So I think the video demo they have is like coffee versus espresso versus like tea or something. Like, or you can detect like fresh fruit versus rotten fruit. So the sensor in itself, the sensor itself doesn't know. It just says, here's the data I'm getting, but using machine learning, machine learning AI training algorithm, you can convince the software to be able to differentiate between the two. Um, comes in a STEM IQT format. Uh, I can show real fast. There's two versions of the software. One is the simple version that runs with CircuitPython or Arduino. Um, and it just uh, prints out the humidity, temperature, and barometric pressure, and then the gas. The gas is measured in ohms, and um, I think the more volatile it is, the lower the resistance. So this, this is going to, I just turned it on, so it's going to go up and down a little bit, um, but it will settle, and then if I put it near alcohol or near, um, you know, volatile organic compounds, something that smells a lot, the gas sensor reading will change. Again, it's a drop-in replacement for the 680, um, but has the ability to change the heater, but you're only gonna really want to program the heater if you're using the machine learning thing. So if the 680 is out of stock, pick up the 688, you can just ignore that part. If you do want the machine learning stuff, you can't use the 680, you need to use the 688, which is this one. So just look for the eight. All right, and the star of the show tonight, besides you, Lady at our community, our customers, and our Adafruit team is, I'm gonna let this video introduce itself. You ready? That's right, sliders. It's sliders time. <laughs> I've had to listen to that like 5,000 times. Okay, yeah. so we've got the slider trinky. Um, this trinky, is like, it's, 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 a, it's a trinky. It plugs into USB. It's, it's a trinky. Like, we it, have a character that I'm going to be debuting soon. Yeah, so let's go to, uh, okay, so it's, it's, it's fully assembled unlike the other trinkies because there's only one slide potentiometer that would fit. Basically, I just picked the small slide pot that we have. And on the bottom of the board uh, is uh, Sam D21. It's got a capacitive touchpad and two NeoPixels. That's kind of it. It's very, very bare bones minimalist. Uh, and the goal here is that you can use Arduino, you can use CircuitPython, it plugs into a USB port, and then you just have like a potentiometer and like that's it. It's like really, that's all it does. And you can uh, touch the end for a capacitive uh, touch it lights action. up. Yeah, so here, here it is. So it slides into the USB A port. I will say, you might be thinking, what if I slide and I keep sliding? Will it pull out? Yeah, it, it'll, it'll eventually pull out. Well, yeah, so it does exactly what exactly you expect what you it to do. So just be um, aware, just, you know, you can slide in, and then if you slide out, just yeah. stop when it stops. Um, so another thing is there's the capacitive touch. If I touch it, it just turns the LEDs on, so it's a way to, to demo. It's got a little um, hole that you can uh, attach to a, a lanyard. There's uh, the two NeoPixels that are individually controllable. Now, the NeoPixels, I kind of wanted to have an under lighting. Um, it does shine through the, the body, but I'll say that because the body of the potentiometer is made out of like FR4, it gives it a yellowish cast. So you're not gonna get all the different colors. You get yellow and you get green and you get red, but the, the more subtle like pinks and blues don't come through. Um, they do come through on the side. It's just a trade-off. I think you know you're not going to get like full resolution every color, but you're it's fine for notification. And then you know you can program as an HID device, or you can have it. You know I actually had it hook up into my Philips Hue lights, and I was reading with um, my desktop. I would read the value of the potentiometer, and I would use it to dim or um, lower the lights in the entire house, which is kind of cool. So yeah. um, it's just a potentiometer with USB. Very simple. It's a trinky. And that's new products. Sliders! Ooh.